The projects of this year's Bay Area Science and Engineering Fair tackled many current world issues. And the future may be looking a little brighter thanks to these innovative minds of tomorrow. I think my invention could maybe in the future go into a eco-friendly car and run off air pressure. There is already some work going on in other countries going into these air-powered cars and I believe even up at McMaster. In the whole though, this has been a great experience for me. The judges were very nice and uh, one of them even said I should patent my uh, little air braking system. Science is really about the future and I think my project and other projects like mine is really important because there's a, a lot of worry about pollution now and we need to know more about it and what things are polluting our atmosphere and our water so that we can start preventing it. Science is good because it helps to understand the world we're in. It helps to build new technologies. The more we know about things, the more we can manipulate them. We research information about the outcome of the universe. So we found out that there were three possibilities. One of them was that the universe was would continue to expand. Um, the other possibility would that would be that it would slow down. And the final possibility is that it would repeat its, its cycle and close upon itself, which we found out that could pose as a disaster if because it might cause another big bang. And therefore all galaxies, planets including ourselves would be reduced to nothing. So our project is about a lot about the past but also a lot about the future. My project was about the idea of the power of suggestion, which is the idea that a preset idea will change how someone interprets information. 91% of people who heard happy music thought he was happy, and 90% of people who heard sad music thought he was sad. And when you have technology, like things like emails and text messages, there are a lot of cues that you miss. Like when you talk to someone, you can see their body language and their facial expression, and that's something you don't have when you're reading things like emails. So really, this shows that humans really do use those things to see whether they think someone is like happy or sad. I think it's used a lot already in advertising where you try to make someone happy so they'll buy your product or you try to put them in the right mindset and I think you really have to be able to understand what's going on and I think when we're reading things that we don't have the other cues we really have to understand that we might not be interpreting it the way we would have if we were had other cues to rely on. The purpose of our project was to find the best ratio of dry ice to water for longest launch in a rocket. Uh, well, we th thought about um, using uh, dry ice in maybe military rockets that don't have heat signatures. We're not sure it would work because dry ice is very finicky and you have to be very precise to get accurate or consistent results. In the future, that's you know change is going to be very important because right now we've got we're beginning to we're running out of oil. We've got you know the Middle East problems going on, and we've got all kinds of turmoil. And we need young innovators, people who think differently, because obviously you know what the old people are saying doesn't work.